Okay, so recently I went ahead and did a thing that I've been avoiding for a while. I updated my A1's firmware to the recent security update. Yes, the one that by default locks out direct wireless printing from third party slices. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like, and what our options are for people wanting to continue to use third party software, like Orca Slicer. Because for my personal hobby of printing miniatures, Orca Slicer has given me by far the best results and I want to stick with it. And I also know that a lot of people rely on Orca Slicer. So what are our options? I'll be sure to split this video into chapters, so if you are just looking for tutorials on how to set up and use these various workflows, they should all be timestamped down below. But I would ask that you at least consider watching through the whole video just to get a proper idea of what's actually happening here and what the best option is for you. But first and foremost, let's discuss what this update actually is. Bamboo have stated this update to be a security enhancement to its machines, limiting unknown or unverified applications from taking control of the printer's critical functions, aka wireless sending of prints and generally just taking control of the machine. As a workaround, Bamboo Lab have released an intermediary piece of software, Bamboo Connect, that can check a sliced file from an unauthorized program and send it to the printer as usual. But this is adding a few unwanted frictional steps to a process that used to be two clicks. So I want to take a look at Bamboo Connect in action to come to my own conclusion on it, as well as take a look at another option that's been made available to us to remove these extra steps by using LAN only mode on the printer. Now it is worth noting that Bamboo Lab did seemingly offer to work with third party applications to verify them, allowing them to then send their print files directly to Bamboo Connect rather than the printer as a somewhat easier workflow. However, as far as I can understand it, the team behind Orca Slicer declined to implement that approach, deeming that it falls short of true integration, and that they wouldn't be able to create the seamless workflow their users expect and deserve, leaving us now with an unfortunate workflow of having to jump between these programs manually. Going into this, I was frankly nervous. Every time I've turned the printer on for the last month or so, it's prompted me to update the firmware, but knowing what that actually entails, I've simply been ignoring it. Which, if like me, you got your A1 before the security update, or you can be bothered rolling the firmware back, that straight up might just be your best option, to stick with the previous version of the firmware if you can. Just to jump back in here quickly, watching through the edit, it did kind of feel like I glanced over this as an option. So let me be clear, unless you have a reason to be using the new update, this is almost certainly your best option, to either ignore the update or roll it back. Bamboo still allows their users to use all of their cloud services, Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Handy, even if you're on these older firmware versions. So unless you need to update, my advice is don't. I'll leave a link down below to an article or a video showing how to downgrade your firmware if you've already updated. Which for me, I've been on LAN mode for about a week now and this is probably what I will end up doing, going back to the previous firmware version. Alright, back to it. But for the sake of being up to date and giving you all a better idea of what this update actually means, I finally went through with it. With the firmware update complete, the first thing I noticed was that Orca Slicer still thought it had a connection. Despite throwing up a few errors and warnings, it still tried to upload a print to the A1, which all looked successful on the PC end, but as expected never actually made it to the printer. Bamboo Studio, Bamboo's official verified slicer, continued to work as expected, which I'll be more than happy to use for simple objects and household prints, but I still need Orca up and running for my miniatures, so let's take a look at our options. Opening up Bamboo Connect, I had immediately assumed that this button allowed for either G-Code or 3MF project files to be imported to the program. So I jumped over to Orca Slicer and sliced up a quick cube. Now rather than being able to simply hit print as I used to and send this off to the A1, I instead had to export the G-Code file. I then quickly figured out that Bamboo Connect wouldn't recognize this and took a moment to see that there was an option to export a plate sliced file in the 3MF format. Which, as far as I understand it, sits somewhere firmly between a project file and a G-code file, so we'll use that option. And just like that we were off to the races. Immediately I am noticing a few things that feel like they're missing. As far as I can tell we don't have a drop down in Bamboo Connect to be able to quickly tell the printer which nozzle is installed, which could become a little annoying if you're like me and often swap nozzles between prints, you'll just have to now make sure that you actually really know what's installed in the machine before hitting go. And unless I really missed something, I didn't see anywhere to preview the camera during printing. To jump back in time a bit, when I first got this printer I wasn't sure how much I would rely on wireless printing directly from the slicer, but because of how frictionless it was, it quickly became so ingrained in my workflow that it feels like a necessity, and this process of having to now export sliced files and drop them into Bamboo Connect, while it is totally easy enough to do, 
isn't that same level of frictionless. Now, if you're coming into this as a new printing hobbyist who wants a printer that just works, I don't necessarily think this is a deal breaker. It's just an unfortunate slight departure of what my definition of they just work meant when these printers first released. By which I mean at the time they did just work with everything. And while you'll absolutely still get that seamless workflow with Bamboo Studio, if you then decide to branch out to Orca or other third party slices, it might feel a little cumbersome to have to go through Bamboo Connect once you're used to that frictionless workflow. Of course this update might be of more concern to people running print farms, third party peripherals or management softwares, but for the majority of hobbyist users, this is just another step in the process to be able to use these slices if you want to use them the way that Bamboo are choosing to support it. But if I'm being honest, even running a single print using this middleman program, not having access to everything in one place within Orca Slicer, it was enough to make me consider the other options. LAN only mode is the middle ground, disabling these new security features from the update by means of disabling cloud access to the printer. This means that any slicer on the same internet connection as the printer can send files directly. However, in doing so, those cloud-based services, like Bamboo Connect, and more importantly Bamboo Handy, won't be available to use for that machine. I enabled this feature directly on the A1 by first enabling developer mode, which in turn allows access to the LAN only feature. Once enabled, I then fumbled around for a while as the printer failed to connect in either Orca or Bamboo Studio. But the fix to this is simple. Removing the printer from the list, then re-adding it from the network and dropping in the pin code provided by the printer on the LAN mode screen. This then allows your slices to directly connect to your printer over your local network, rather than using your Bamboo account like it would have done while you were connected to those cloud features. And just like that we have a very similar workflow to what we are used to. Able to slice up our file in Orca and send it directly to the A1, with full control over the AMS, camera and other features. However, remember what I said earlier about that ability to skip objects mid-print only being available through Bamboo Handy, the account-driven cloud-based app, which is now essentially disabled for this printer. Yeah, that's the major downside of this solution. You do lose that ability to skip objects mid-print, because that function was only ever available to the A1s via the Bamboo Handy app. It's not available via Orca Slicer, Bamboo Studio, even on the printer UI itself, which always felt like an oversight, but is now frankly just a completely missing feature for anyone wanting to use LAN mode on their printers. So if there is anyone from Bamboo watching this, please consider making that feature available just on the printer's UI in a future firmware update. I don't need it in the Slicer or Bamboo Connect, just give me direct access to it on the printer and I'll be more than happy. Just going to jump in here quickly and let you know that if you do like what I'm doing here and want to help support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do so. This month we have an awesome bundle of bases, the Crumbling Cathedral, made to print on FDM printers entirely support free and designed with flat top surfaces to give great results with little to no visible stepping. This month's release comes with a ton of basing bits and in a range of sizes, including for the first time oval variations of the designs. All of that on top of the welcome bundle that includes my painting handles and other printable goodies. And if you're not interested in printable STLs but still want to get involved or help support the channel, the entry level primer tier will give you access to the Painted for Combat Patreon Discord, downloads to my printer profiles, as well as the advanced version of Resin to FDM. All of that for just a couple of bucks that helps support the channel so much. As always, a huge thank you to all of my Patreon members, with a special shout out to all of my Painted for Display tier supporters, past and present. And to our newest members of this tier, The Painting Snail and Delord Zero, your badges will now be joining the shelf. Everyone over on the Patreon are the reason that I get to keep doing what I'm doing here, so thank you so much for all of your support. I can understand people's reactions and concerns to this update, being annoyed that the frictionless process they were promised is being altered, and threatened for lack of a better term, with Bamboo setting this precedent that they are able and willing to make bigger changes like this to their ecosystem. But at the end of the day, this is Bamboo Labs' ecosystem. We always knew that, even if it isn't or wasn't a closed ecosystem. Yes, this update creates some hoops that more in-depth users will have to jump through if they want to continue to use third-party tools and software. I guess my main hope is that through this process, Bamboo managed to find the right balance of a simple, safe, easy-to-use ecosystem of printers and software for people who want that no-fuss experience, while still allowing for the rest of us to use these stellar machines in whatever way we want for our hobbies, print stores, or workshops, without introducing further friction to our processes. 
At the end of the day, if you want that quality printing experience of a bamboo machine, but still want to be able to use your third party tools and softwares, it seems that we have to choose one of the three options before us. Roll back the firmware or hold off on updates to our printers, use Bamboo Connect and get used to that extra step in the process, or use the LAN only mode and miss out on a very nice to have feature in object skipping. Which I'll say again, Bamboo, please just add this to the printer UI. Now that these updates are actually out and we've been given access to LAN only mode and the option to hold off or roll back on firmware updates, if you had initial reservations during the talks of these updates, drop a comment below if you still have those same concerns. Or do you think that we've been given enough tools to create our own workarounds? I know this has been a little bit different to most of my videos, so thank you for sticking around. If you did enjoy, consider dropping a like down below and subscribe to stay up to date with my other 3D printing and miniatures focused videos. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.